good music to pick up your mood, isn't it? Only Murs and Dance with me tonight. BBC Radio Sheffield, I'm Paulette Edwards, and today our experts, well... I don't know if we could do with advice from her. We've had Valentine's Day tomorrow. I hope it was uh, yesterday, rather. I hope it was exciting for you. Sun shining today. For me, it's payday today, and I'm looking towards the weekend. So I'm actually feeling quite positive. Do I need a happiness coach, Frederica Roberts? She's joined us today for a chat, but I don't know if I need her. If you would like to ask Frederica any questions, give her a call. 0800 111 4949. You can text Sheffield to 81333 with your message and your name. We can have a chat with you as well. So, Frederica, smiling away as you always tend to be. I'm not sure how useful it is to be going on about happiness anyway. So, we, you know, don't we all have peaks and troughs when it comes to happiness? Absolutely, absolutely. And probably my, my sort of official title of the happiness speaker might be a little beaker, might be a little bit of a misnomer. I, I, I prefer to talk about positive psychology, really. Um, you know, there, there are obviously times in life, uh, whether it's short term, you know, you're just in a bad mood or, or longer term things. There are times in life when we're just not feeling great and that's absolutely fine. Um, um, and, and we shouldn't be trying to plaster over that with some kind of artificial happiness or, or some kind of, um, uh, some psychologists have even talked about the tyranny of happiness. You know, yeah. you must be happy. Um, of course not. Uh, but it's, you know, you can be well even when you're not feeling happy, even when you're not feeling great. And that's what my work is, is all about. I, I don't coach on a one-to-one basis, but I speak and I train uh, and I write on, on the topic. Um, and um, I, I think it's particularly important. You know, I, I love working with children and and giving them the tools to, to be more resilient, to overcome obstacles and that kind of thing is far more important than trying to just plaster a smile on and, and feel yeah. happy. Because it tends to be, from what I read and hear and you know enough about you know this type of thing in there, happiness is the goal and that makes you feel pretty rubbish if you're not feeling positive or if you're going through things that are a little bit of a challenge. Absolutely and I think you know we've got to be careful about the kind of stuff that does get put out there in magazines and stuff and and also this notion of happiness that that can be seen as a very selfish endeavour and actually when you look at all the uh, research into uh, really well-being which is far more valuable I think or flourishing I love that word you know being able to flourish um, that it's actually happiness True happiness comes from from not being selfish and from being altruistic. From I don't know about that. I might disagree with this actually because I think we need to rebrand that word selfish because I think sometimes if we're selfish, it can help us to feed ourselves to flourish more than if we're not selfish. And I think often selfish is seen as a a negative word when it should be seen as positive. Oh yeah, I mean self care, looking after yourself is absolutely paramount. Um, What I'm talking about. You've said self care, (laughs) so you've changed the word. I think we should rebrand selfish. Well, I do say Frederica. to people in my talks quite often, be selfishly selfless. <laughs> uh, because actually what, what you find is that um, when when you look outside yourself, and that's what I mean by not being selfish, um, when you, you when you look at the fact that, you know, you, you're not a standalone being, you, you have a place in the world, in society, etc. And if you have meaning in your life, and whatever that meaning might be, you know, different people have different purposes, meanings, etc. But when you have meaning in your life, then you, you are going to be happier if you pursue that meaning. And, and that's where, you know, it's absolutely right then to be selfish, you know, to, to do whatever you need to do to make sure that you fulfil your own meaning, your own purpose um, in, in whichever way. And yes, it is really important from that point of view, yeah. looking after yourself. But some of these words have meaning in your life. What does that mean? What does it mean to have meaning? <laughs> it can mean different things to different people. Um, I mean, you know, at the moment for me, for example, there are a number of meanings. There are a number of meanings. Um, I find a lot of meaning from being a mom and a wife. Uh, I find a lot of meaning from my work. You know, I get a lot of joy out of seeing the difference that my work makes to people. And um, I, I also get get a lot of meaning unexpectedly uh, from, from political campaigning and activism, which I'd never done before. And um, I, I found that from a place of rage and anger, I actually thought, well, I can put this to good use. And and use that as a, as a positive tool rather than it affecting my mental health negatively I can use that to have meaning so meaning can come from all sorts of different places and sources and it can mean different things to different people I think we need to talk about from a place of rage and anger because I, saw, <laughs> I spoke to my sister, there was, the group of us went out recently, uh, my sister's a separate story but I went out with a group of, and, and a lot of my friends were saying you know what I feel angry, I don't know why I'm angry, I feel um, uncomfortable, I feel 
cross with the world and I need to do something about it, but I don't know what. So that may be something that we can talk about, yeah. Frederica Roberts. If you get in touch and ask Frederica a question, you can do that on 0800 111 49 49. You can text us on 81333. Start your message with Sheffield. UB40. It's UB40, that. Kingston Town on BBC Radio Sheffield, but we're in Sheffield City. We're on BBC Radio Sheffield with Frederica Roberts, who is a woman who believes we should be more optimistic, I suppose. It's a general way of summing up what you do. Is that all right? <laughs> Frederica's means I of, suppose so. I mean, so. optimism is a, is a funny word as well. But Why? yes. Why? Um, well, again, I, I don't want to tell anybody how they should be feeling. That's that's the thing. And yeah, but um, you're the happiness woman. Oh, you <laughs> want us to be happy? I thought that was the deal. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd like to help everybody be be as happy as they can be and be as mentally well as they can be. Um, but uh, I'm certainly not here to say to people you must be optimistic. Actually, sometimes a healthy dose of pessimism is needed for us to take action. I just mentioned before the acting from a place of rage and anger. And if you're constantly perennially optimistic optimistic, then you would never feel that sense of anger and sometimes helplessness that drives you to take action, to fight social injustice, etc. It doesn't always drive you to take action, though. Sometimes it just leads you to feel stagnant and down and, it can. and blue, maybe. You know, it, and can, it can get yes. worse than that. We know that it can get worse than that. So how do we deal then with, you know, as, as I was saying to you just when the music was on, there are times when I we, sh we shout at the telly, you know, when the yeah, news yeah. is on. Yeah, absolutely. In the evening, we follow, we shout at the telly because we, we feel so cross. We're talking about a group of friends. We went out and they were saying, we just feel so powerless. Yeah. And we're fed up of hearing certain things being discussed. How do we move beyond that? We're lucky today. We've got a nice weather. The temperature's a bit higher. The sun's out. But we're in the middle of winter, in a sense, aren't we? Just oh, past the, the middle. Yes. But, yeah. you know, it's not a great time, is it, <laughs> to be um, feeling not great about things? No. And, you know, th th there is a difference as well about feeling not great about those two, you know, people who are perhaps clinically depressed, etc. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a clinical psychologist, so I'm not going to, to address that side of things. But, you know, there are things that we can all do, and there's a lot of research that, that helps us with that. Um, so for example the, the power of positive emotions um, there's a lot that's been written about that and when I say positive emotions I don't mean you know there are good emotions and bad emotions I'm talking about emotions that make us feel good or make, make us feel energised and emotions that make us feel bad and make us feel um, you know lethargic and anger for example can be both you know it's how you channel that um but so how do we need to channel it then so well, we don't go down and, and make it's things worse for ourselves channeling it to to again coming back to that sense of purpose so if you're feeling angry about something you know what can you do um you know what small step even if it's you're not going to change the world overnight but what small step can you take today that's going to do something even if it's just make a phone call send an email write a blog post you know phone call sent an email write a blog post you know even if it's a rant and a call to action on facebook you know something that can maybe raise awareness for one more person about what it is that that's enraging you and something that that they can do I, i'm very conscious with the work that i do that uh, being quite politically active I, I started ranting you know on, on facebook and on twitter and then i thought you know is this at odds with with me being the happiness speaker yeah, and i yeah. really thought about that very carefully and um, I looked at all the research about meaning and purpose and about positive psychology and, and actually, no, it's not at odds at all because coming full circle to where I started, you know, having meaning and purpose is really important to happiness and well-being. And so actually, when, when I do rant, I usually, I mean, occasionally it's good to just let it out and rant, mm. but I try to actually... Where do you rant then? Obviously, you've got to be oh, careful. You don't want to rant to other people because you don't want to upset them. No, I, I, I rant on, on, on social Online. media an awful lot. I, I blog, I do videos and I, I go on marches. I eat stalls, I do all of that kind of stuff. And um, and when I, when I do rant on social media or write blog posts, what I try and then do is always have some kind of call to action, some kind of positive, you know, okay, if you feel like I do, here's something small you can do. Um, you know, and, and, and most people can, can write an email to their MP if they're unhappy about something, you know. Um, so th th there, I there are little things that we can all do and little actions, and we should never think that those little actions don't make a difference. Mm. Because, you know, if, if you look at the suffragette movement, I was in, in Westminster just a couple of days ago and we were looking just before you go up to the viewing gallery there's some windows with these railings and those railings were the railings
things that separated the women's gallery from from the, the from the House of Commons, and that's where the suffragettes chain themselves to, and that's why you're now not allowed to take padlocks or bike chains into the Houses of Parliament. I learned. Oh, what and, a shame! I'm going to bring mine in. When I'm. <laughs> I know, just bring them in. And I just thought, here's an amazing piece of history that shows us how a small action by a small group of people can make a huge difference. So whatever is happening, you know, the school children that are campaigning today. Well, that's quite an important you know, thing to talk yeah. about because we're talking about all of this from the p perspective of adults. Yeah. What about children? Is it important for them to get involved in activism or is it is it wrong for us to be kind of making them aware of all these horrible things that are going on in the world? I think they are aware whether we want them to be or not and uh, you know we live in a world where they, they can get the information for themselves what we can do is help them understand the information that's out there help them make sense of it give them platforms to actually discuss it because a lot of what might give them anxiety and fear is if they don't feel that they can talk about this stuff that's worrying them and it's all happening and they're powerless you know they can't vote yet they can't really influence that much directly but if they can at least try and talk through the issues and understand and you know i'm, I'm not one for you you know, if teachers are listening, <laughs> probably in school, but if teachers are listening, whose teachers are listening, whose kids have gone off today, you know, I, I work a lot in schools and far be it for me to, to advocate for children to, to skip school, to do something. However, you know, these children have found a purpose and they are actually following that purpose and they're trying to make a better world for their generation and beyond in the future. And who are we to stop that? A lot of the work I do is on, on character education, you know, developing children's character strengths. And that includes things like perseverance, courage, uh, hope, um, you know, kindness and and all of these things, they're, they're practicing all of that by being out there campaigning. So I think we can look at that as actually they are doing what what education is all about actually they are they're learning these skills and you know they're learning to fend for themselves to speak for themselves and to speak up but in addition to all of that going on with children and of course you know as you said it's a great thing to get them involved and for them to be able to be aware of their surroundings the environment and all of that but we are hearing stories of children as young as 10 feeling yes. um you do workshops in school as you said yeah. how do you deal with that then because you know you're talking about almost getting our kids to, to fly off and you know take on the world do things feel that they're a part of what's going on for some children it can be quite stagnating it can make them feel smaller and it can make them feel quite down how do you motivate how do you turn um, that around well again i'm not a clinical psychologist what i do is primarily working on prevention however i have worked with groups of children where individual kids have come up to me i remember one little girl 10 years old um, and I just taught her some simple doing three daily gratitudes and a very simple breathing meditation that takes seconds to do. And she came up to me at the end of that session and then I saw her again a few weeks later and she came up and she said, thank you so much because I suffer from a lot of anxiety and panic attacks and my, my heart just broke. I was thinking, you're 10 years old, you know, you, you shouldn't even know. know the meaning of the word mm. panic attack. But weeks later, she told me it works, it helps. So it changed the world. If you can spend 30 seconds learning to, to calm your amygdala down, the part of the brain that deals with panic. Thank and you. Just you knew I was going to ask you about that, man. You did, didn't you? <laughs> and and uh, yeah, the amygdala is kind of there to go, you're going to die at every opportunity. It's there to save your life. It's the very primal part of our brain. And... Um, and we feel that when we go into exams, some people who are not mad like me feel that when they're about to stand on a stage and talk to a load of people, um, and, and the brain's giving them the same message, you're going to die. It doesn't matter how dire or not the situation actually is. And and so kids, whatever situations they're facing in life, whether it is exam stress, whether it's parents splitting up, whether it's abuse happening, neglect, whatever, the, the, their amygdala is going into overdrive. They're really, you know, they're getting into these panic situations. I think we need to step away from the amygdala for a moment because you're making me nervous. <laughs> BBC Radio chef Frederica Roberts is with us. We're talking about um, how we can make our lives feel better. It's a better way of t saying it, that. You talked about daily gratitudes there. Yes. Three daily gratitudes. Just give us a snippet of that so we've got that to play with before okay. you leave. Yeah, so there's been some great research into uh, the power of writing down three good things at the end of each day and, and actually writing, you know, a little bit about why they're important to you. So, for example? Um, so it could be, you know, I mean, for me today might be, I've been here, I've had a really great chat, the sun's shining, and I'm heading off to Edinburgh tonight 
tonight and it's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, so <laughs> it's all good. So, so they, I mean, you know, and it's I can cool. keep rattling off, but it can be tiny, tiny things. Sometimes it's I'm in a traffic jam and a great song comes on, and I can go. That's that's a little gratitude. You know, it it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. You can find tiny little things to be grateful for. And what you're doing is then you're, you're retuning your brain to all the good things. That doesn't mean the bad stuff isn't happening. It means you notice the good stuff more. And that has actually been shown. People have done this for seven days and um, it actually reduced real depression and increased happiness for up to six months for the right. participants. So on your study. phone or a little piece of paper, a little notebook, three things that you're grateful for, th three things that have made you feel good particular yeah, day. Yeah, at Just the end three. of the day. And then you go to bed with a positive thought in your head as well and you sleep better. Right, Frederica Roberts. No one could get a word in edgeways. No one's called us. <laughs> That's Sorry. why. No, no, it's for both of us. Thank you so much for joining us on BBC Radio Sheffield. Enjoy your birthday and enjoy Thank Scotland. It'll be great. Scotland, it'll be great.